Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today we are talking about the Oculus Quest 2. Now the reason why is the Oculus Quest 2 just shipped today. If you are one of the lucky pre-order people that got yours today, congratulations. Now you may be just like me, you've got it, you're happy, everything is wonderful. Now you're wondering, how do I develop games for this thing? That's a very logical thing to do and that's what we're going to do here. We're going to take a look at what tools and options are available for developing games on your Oculus Quest 2. Now this will apply to the Oculus Quest 1, it's basically the same thing, just lower with a different uh, screen technology, but both things apply. They use the same developer tool chain, same game engines, everything else. So that's what we're going to look at in this particular video. Now, of course, since I have one of these devices, I am going to continue to play with it. That means you will probably see videos specifically on things like creating a VR game using Godot or Unity or Unreal Engine, the typical stuff you expect from this channel. There will probably be a decent amount of Oculus Quest 2 content coming because that's what I'm working on myself. But I'm always interested to hear what you guys think. Now, if you're unaware of what the Oculus Quest 2 is all about, basically, it is a cutting edge and Android chip. This is Android 10, I believe, inside here, and there's a modified Snapdragon 865 processor in there, and, and that's that's solid. That's better than most uh, high-end phones are actually shipping with today. You get about two to three hours of standalone play, but you can tether it using USB to your computer, and you can use it as a desktop headset. It's a full six degrees of freedom headset, unlike the likes of the like, Gear VR or the Daydream. Also, those used to last like less than an hour in time in total usage. This, hopefully, two to three hours use. You can hook up a battery while you play. Plus, again, you can hook it up to your PC and use it just like a desktop headset. So you could use uh, a typical uh, Oculus or Steam VR kind of approach to it. Your Steam VR and Oculus libraries over the USB can actually stream to the device. So it's got a nice combination of features. So now what we're going to do in the rest of this video, I'm going to walk away and then we will look at the particular uh, options you have for game development using a Quest 2 and by default a Quest 1. So let's jump right in. All right, so now it's time to start developing for your Oculus Quest. Where should you go? Well, nine times out of ten, the answer is probably going to be the same spot. The Oculus Developer Portal that is available at developer.oculus.com forward slash quest. You're also going to have to go here eventually and create an account so you can get signing keys for your applications. If you want to deploy your application, you're going to have to put a signature on it. I'll get to that in a later tutorial where I show you how to deploy a custom developed application. Just to be aware that step exists. Now this is probably the number one portal for information. In fact, if you look for Unreal Engine integration or Unity integration on either Unreal or Unity's website, they will send you back to here for documentation details. So this is, again, probably where you want to start. Now, if you're looking at doing native platform development, what native platform development means is you writing C++ code for Android. That, that's ultimately what the Oculus Quest 2 is. It's an Android device. Uh, if you go for the native approach, you're going to have a couple of tools here. First off, you're going to have uh, to install Android Studio, which is about 800 megs, which is going to install the Android platform, which is about two to three gigabytes with emulators and all of that kind of stuff installed. And then the, um, the Oculus Mobile SDK. Now the nice thing about the mobile SDK is you'll find inside of it there is a bunch of VR samples. These are C++ codes uh, that show you how to do various different things. So there's a VR360 photo viewer, a video viewer, a cinema app, an input app. Uh, we've got a couple of samples including VR Cube World, including one using Vulkan rendering. Uh, we've got a sample base to basically you could drive your own code from that. And we've got one here for how to do hand-based tracking. So all of the sample apps are available here. They've got some instructions on how to deploy. Since this is ultimately Android, you're using the Android tool chain, which is ADB, and you're creating an APK file, which is deployed to your device. There are a couple of ways to deploy it. You can either copy it over using Windows Explorer or your file system of choice, or you can use ADB to send the file up as you can see right there. So if you want to get down in nitty gritty with things doing C++ code, this is the approach you're going to take. You're going to do the, um, you have to install Android Studio, which nicely is free and it's an excellent IDE to be honest. And then all the Android tool chain and then the a specific Oculus SDK. Now chances are that is not the way you want to start. What you're going to probably want to do is pick a game engine. Now the two game engines were already spoiled in the previous one. The most common choices are uh, Unity game engine, probably most popular by quite a bit. And then following that, you've got the Unreal game engine. Now the nice thing about both of these systems, Unity and Unreal, as we will see, they've got all of the things you can handle in here. So you've got an HD uh, render pipeline support for virtual reality, which is nice. You can get high resolution graphics in there. you got libraries for spatial audio, stereo instancing, 
everything. You can handle your particle systems. All of the stuff that you normally get in these game engines is here, and it's all abstracted away. So the nice thing here is you're developing using a common implementation in your game engine, and you can deploy it to a variety of different devices without having to do anything really special. So you're basically developing a VR game when it comes to Unity, which you can then deploy to the Rift, to the Vive, to mixed reality devices, and so on. And the same thing is ultimately true if you choose Unreal Engine. It also has its own abstraction layer there and some tools in place, you know, so if you need visual on-screen uh, implementation, hand tracking, all that, it is there and it'll be able uh, and capable out of the box. Uh, you've got, again, all of the stuff that you're expecting from uh, a game engine is available to you too. And we got rendering up to 90 hertz, which is nice. That is a feature that is coming to the Oculus Quest 2. And as you can see here, this supports Magic Leap Oculus Rift, Steam VR, HTC Vive, PlayStation VR, Mixed Reality, various different platforms, and then of course, obviously not listed here, the Oculus Quest as well. So there is your, um, your two big game engine choices. Well, Unreal and Unity are obviously the two big players. What you see in front of you is another option that's out there. The Godot Game Engine also has support for the Oculus Quest. It actually has specific support via the Oculus Quest Toolkit. Uh, so if you want to go the completely free and open source route, that is an option for you as well. So we can head on over. We've got, first off, two parts here. One is built on top of the other one. You've got the Oculus Mobile Godot plugin, open source project for supporting uh, the Oculus Quest, the Oculus Quest 2 now, and the Oculus Go. And then on top of that, you have the Ocul the Godot Oculus Quest Toolkit, and that is what we saw in action right here. Even with a sample game, Beat Saber, Beat Saber kind of clone, it's got a couple of um, climbing type games, different kind of projects that you can work with, so you can basically get going right out of the box and uh, an emulator for running it on your desktop. So if you want to go the open source route, Godot is definitely an option there. Uh, moving on from them, we have CryEngine. CryEngine is called almost an option. You can't actually do VR development for CryEngine unless you get into the beta program that's ongoing right now. And I, I don't know what the heck is going on with CryEngine. They've been really slow to do re new releases as of late, but they do have VR support. The Line, which is an Oculus Quest game, uh, was written at using CryEngine. So obviously they have VR support, but they haven't made it available to everybody. They just have it in their beta program, which is a little unfortunate. Now, speaking of CryEngine, we also have Lumberyard. Now, Lumberyard only has support for desktop head-mounted displays. So if you want to develop for um, the Oculus Quest 2, you're going to be doing it as basically you're creating an Oculus Rift style game, and then you're going to run it via tether cable. Obviously not an ideal solution, and hopefully they do get Oculus Quest 2 support at some point, at least in the near future, but as it stands right now, not an option. But they do have Android support in the works, and they do have VR support, so I just mash those two things together, and things will get very much better. And then we're getting into the world of web VR. Now, this is kind of one of the easiest ways you could get into it. You could use something like A-Frame, and A-Frame is basically kind of HTML for virtual reality. There was actually this was normal, VRML. This was a thing that was going to be huge back in the 90s, back before, you know, we had headsets and fast enough computers and 3D acceleration and all that stuff. We tried it once. Well, now we're trying it again, and we're doing it in the form of A-Frame. And these things, as you can see, have VR controller support. And the really A-Frame is really simple to get started with. So here you can see the source code required to create this scene, which you can toggle over into VR and you can run it directly in your browser. The code is very um, simple on the whole and apparently taking quite a while to load. Just a second. Here you can see how simple A-Frame is. You say, okay, that just looks like a typical HTML code. Yeah, it pretty much is, but you're defining the scenes in it, a scene, a box, a sphere, a plane, and so on. So this is probably the easiest way to start creating you know, basic virtual reality world. So if you want to get your feet wet and there is a browser built into the Quest 2 that you can use to browse this kind of content, that is definitely an option in the form of A-Frame. Now, A-Frame itself is built on another framework we're going to get back to in just a second. But first, we're talking about another HTML game engine. This one runs in the browser. It is called Play Canvas. It has VR and AR support as well. Basically, you'll be, be able to just point your browser at it and you can run it directly in your web browser again. I've done a couple of tutorials on uh, uh, Play Canvas itself, nothing specifically on VR or AR stuff, uh, but it is really quite simple to get up and running with another option there as well. And then if you want to get a little bit lower level, as I mentioned earlier on, A-Frame itself, this is actually built on top of another library for a browser called 3JS. Uh, so if you want to get even lower level, there are instructions on getting 3JS up and going. And some web examples 
it's like a, a web roller coaster implemented if you want to get sick. Oh, so it says VR not supported. I'm not sure if it's just not plugged in or anything, but you can see um, using this guy and WebGL, you can actually make VR applications as well. And so that is basically the roundup. So what are you really going to want to do? You just got your quest. You want to figure out what to do. Go to this portal right here. We've got developer.oculus.com uh, Oculus forward slash quest. Bit of a rundown of, you know, what's involved in the various different most popular game engines, that being Unity and Unreal Engine, and then the various different um, features of the, the platform itself. And then, again, on top of that, there are other options. I will link them all in the linked article down below. I know a lot of my community are big into Godot, so I will have links to the Oculus Mobile Godot plugin and the Quest Toolkit, which, again, is what you see in action right here. Kind of showcases a number of different examples. If we come over here, over to the scenes, you're going to see a number of different scenes. For example, if you want to have a uh, pistol, here is a pistol scene uh, showing a VR pistol in a world. Or we've got, uh, where's the walk in place? Here's another VR world example. You can see controlling in a world handsets and environments and so on. And the way that it's implemented in Godot is pretty straightforward as well. I'm going to probably do a follow up video on it as well. But just to be aware, it's again is a uh, Android target. So you're going to have to install the. Um, the export uh, templates uh, for the Android SDK. And you're also going to have the Android SDK installed. So even if you are ultimately going to do this with Godot, you're still going to need to install the Android Studio, uh, which is going to give you ADB and uh, JAR Signer and other tools that you're going to need. So this part, unfortunately, isn't really going to be skipped regardless to which platform you go with, other than possibly Unreal Engine, which is probably part of why it does an additional five gigabyte install when you want Android support. So anyways, those are the basic options out there. There are other game engines that can be used to do VR development, but we got the biggies here and we got some of the easy options, stuff like A-Frame. So if you want to get out there, start developing with your Oculus Quest 2. Uh, it's a great time to do so. It won't cost you anything. And stay tuned to the channel. Should hopefully have more coverage coming up. If there's something specific you want to see covered, let me know. Comments down below and I will do my best. All right, that's it. Talk to you all later.